Hey, I want to talk about all-in-one WP security. For your WordPress website, there are many well-known plugins out there and solutions and tips and tricks you can use to make your website more secure. Obviously, your hosting provider might have a plugin or advise you on what best to do. But the all-in-one WP Security and Firewall plugin is free and it is really, really good to use. What I want to do in this video, though, is go over the settings because there are quite a few and I want to make sure that we understand them and how you need to use them or utilize them for your website. It's available in the WordPress repository. Just go and install and activate it. By the way, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow because we're going to help you with your websites. Once it's installed in your WordPress dashboard, on the left-hand side, you'll see WP Security. And this is what I mean. When you go there, there's a lot of options there. And it's easy to kind of get a bit lost in it. I'm just going to hit WP Security. So in a way, we're in the very first tab, which is the dashboard. And what it's currently saying is that the strength on this test website is pretty low. So what we're going to try and do is improve that and get it higher. But we are going to go through all the settings. And that's what we're going to do right now. Now, if we have a look at some of the tabs on here, and we are still on the dashboard, okay, the locked IP addresses might be where you've locked certain addresses from ever getting into your website. The same with the permanent block list as well. And obviously, if there is any activity going on over time, you'll start to see logs here as well. But did you notice over here, we're being requested to basically set up a PHP firewall. I would definitely do that. So let's just hit set up now. Back on the first tab, if we scroll down, we do have some critical features. Now, admin username, that's obviously already activated. But login lockdown, this is kind of like the brute force where you can stop people repeatedly trying to guess your password. Now, when you click this, it will actually take you over to uh, this tab over here, the user login. And this is now where you get to decide on what you're going to go for. So are you going to enable this feature? And I would probably say, yep, yeah, you want to go for that. Allow unlock requests. So this is where if my account was locked because I've accidentally put in too many times, I'll get an email back to say, OK, do you want unlock? Which isn't a bad idea to have, especially if you're the admin or you forget what you're doing. And obviously here you can decide on how many login attempts they're allowed to do. You might want to reduce it to two or one, eh, maybe not one, not a great idea, but have a think about what you want to do here. So you've got some general information down here to kind of help you out. I mean, look, you've even got email status to notify maybe someone. Check this if you want to receive an email when someone's been locked out. Now, this is a test website. Maybe there's three, four, five other people using the website and you kind of want to know if there is any suspicious activity going on because you might want to contact someone and go, hey, I've noticed your email. You're continuously forgetting your password or something. What's going on there? So have a think about that. And one of the things I do like is where it says instantly lock out specific usernames. Now, I know we don't have any users that have the word admin. We don't have any with the names Imran. Um, we also don't have any with like um, uh, username, things like that. So if you kind of think that, you know, I mean, I could even put Web Squadron in as well, right? We don't have any admin accounts with those kind of usernames. So you could, in effect, totally lock them out um, because it's not uncommon for some bots and stuff to put the word admin in and then they try and work out what the password is. So instantly lock those out. Let's just save those settings. Now I'm going to go back to dashboard. And I'm going to scroll back down because we now have another option called file permission. Now, when we go click that, it will take us over here to the file system security. Now, at the moment, I'm being told that there's nothing to worry about except over here with the WP config. And it's basically saying set the recommended parameters. So I've got a bit of a warning going on there. So I'm just going to click that and that is now enabled. Let's go back to the dashboard and we're just going to go down and now do the basic firewall as well. Now, at this point, I would also recommend that you do have a backup of your website as well. Uh, or maybe it's via your host, Updraft Plus, all-in-one migration, whatever you want. Because when you do activate some of these things, if you've got a WooCommerce shop or something like that, you might just want to double check that everything is still okay. If you're really, really hardcore about protecting your website, it's not a bad idea to do this and to also block the access for the XML RPC. Don't ask me to explain it, okay? If you want me to explain it, there's some tips down here, okay, about what it exactly does and uh, save it. I mean, we've ticked the other one, so that should be fine. Now, if we go back to our dashboard, okay, we have now activated all of those. And at the moment, we're not in maintenance mode and anything else. However, our score has gone up. Um, I mean, it says here 100. I mean, out of a total score of 525, I'd love to see someone who gets 525. Now, in the settings tab, 
which is over here. You get some, you, well, you have the features if you want to now reset everything, but I'm caring more about the other tabs here. You might want to make sure you do back up your HT access file as well, um, because when you do make changes, you are kind of affecting the core of your website in the back end. And when it is backed up, it will store it over here. So please keep note of that address if you ever have to get it from your host provider or anywhere else. Um, it's not a bad idea if I was you to try and get into that um, and actually download it onto your hard drive somewhere as well, just so you've got it safe. And then obviously, if there are any issues, you can restore from here as well. We have the WP config file. Again, it's asking you, do you want to back that up? I mean, I would say that any time you're given the facility to back things up, I would do that. Delete plugin settings. Well, I would say you definitely want to do this. Um, bear in mind, though, if you deactivate a plugin, uh, some of the settings remain in your WordPress file manager, which is fine because you might want to reactivate and you don't want to go through all the settings again. However, if you've decided, no, I don't want that plugin and I'm deleting it, you know, when you uninstall it, you want it completely gone. So you might want to make sure that this is done as well. I mean, I I definitely recommend doing this. Otherwise, you end up having to use a separate plugin to clean up your databases. It is not a bad idea to actually tick this and remove the metadata because what can happen is sometimes there can be Ill details about your website that is visible for hackers or something where they might notice that your one of your plugins or one of your themes or even your WordPress version is out of date. Like right now, it says WordPress, WordPress 6.02 is available. I have not updated yet. This is a test website. But what if WordPress 6.0.1 there was a vulnerability. So I would say it's not a bad idea to do this, to remove the metadata. Not everyone will agree with me. I get that, but I, I would do it. Now the import export tab, um, I mean, this is a this is one of those ones that I would probably export right at the end. You don't have to do this if you're keeping up drafts, sorry, backups of your website and things like that. But you could, if you want, export all of your settings. What would be quite good about this though is that you could have a completely brand new website. So you do this once and you know it works and everything is fine. You can then export that file and you have a brand new website. You just import this in. This is the all in one uh, WP security and firewall settings. So if you've said certain usernames or whatever's cannot happen and you like to have a particular way of how you set up security on your website, this would make things a lot quicker and more efficient for you. So why not? Once you've done everything, export it, brand new website, import, and away you go. And what about two-factor authentication? Now, not everyone is a fan of this. I know in the NHS, they hate this because they always have to go and grab their phones and stuff to log in. But at the moment, you log into your website, username, password. What if you then want a two-factor authentication? So it might be that something else you have to do to be able to log in. Now, even though this is enabled, if you hit save changes and you log out and log back in, Nothing will actually happen. What you've got to do um, is actually go down here to where it says two-factor authentication. So let's just click that. Now, here's where I'm going to go back on myself because even though you do, once you've activated it or said you want to use the two-factor authentication, when you go down here to two-factor authentication and you go in, there is an app you can use called O2P Auth, A-U-T-H. And once you've installed that and you've got the QR code and all of that, um, it will give you, it will generate a new code for you. But I have found this does not always work. Seriously, it does not always work. And sometimes you would do it, go through, and it just kept kind of like saying, no, you can't log into your website. So I'll have to go in via my host provider, which was a big pain. And I will do an update on this some point in the future. But the two factor authentication, it just wasn't working for me. OK, I don't know. And I would just say you don't want to run this risk when you're logging out your website. OK, you get to this point when you log in and it then says one time password required. You put in the code and basically this is what the message you would get. I've just hit login, but you'll basically be told you can't log in. Let's now just have a look at the other settings we have here. We have user accounts. Um, here's the two admin accounts that we currently have on here at the moment. There's no action required. Um, they're not using the default admin names. So that's good practice. 
What about user login? So again, we kind of cover this originally with like, you know, where you're going to white label or instantly lock out any names. We do have some other tabs though. We have failed login record. So you can see that forced log out. I mean, maybe someone's on the website for say five, 10 minutes. You want to force them out. A lot of websites kind of do that. So you might say, okay, force them out after say uh, 10 minutes of inactivity, five minutes. I'll let you decide on that. I mean, I'm not going to do that because this is a test website and I don't want it to continuously log me out when I don't want it to. Let me just say that. Account activity logs, you get to see like how long has someone been in or out, who's currently logged in at the moment or were they at any point in time. And of course, some additional settings as well. Now, if we go down to user registration, you know, when someone registers to an account or whatever on your website, you need to manually approve them. Not a good idea if you've got a WooCommerce shop because you might have loads of orders coming in. But maybe only, you know, there's like a restricted list. You've got to be, you know, on the special list to be able to have an admin login. If so, you might want to go through some of the settings down here. Um, registration capture, registration honeypot. I would recommend that you do do this on registration pages if you are going down the route of manual approval. It's not a bad thing to do. From my opinion, if you're doing a WooCommerce shop uh, and someone is now buying a purchase, recapture, you know, I feel that that could put some people off from going through the full, you know, the conversion to buying something, but you'll make your own decision and your own mind up about that. Database security. Now, it is recommended that we do a database backup before we do this. Let's just click that button there and let's create a backup. Obviously, um, the creators of this plugin are with Updraft Plus as well. It's the same company. So that is now done and dusted. Let's go back over to our database security. We've already done the backup. And so if you are very precious about the backend data of your database, this is basically going to help to secure that. I have to be honest, I don't know too much information about this. I mean, I use SQL a lot and I know about SQL injections and how there's been vulnerabilities in the past. However, if you want to give a new database table prefix, because at the minute it is GLW, you might want to change it to, I don't know, something like that. Go for it. However, please make sure you've got that backup in place because we are now messing around with the hardcore backend. If you're unsure of that, don't do it, okay? Don't feel like you've got to go through every single thing that we're going through here at the moment. The blacklist manager, of course. Do you want to blacklist some IP addresses? Maybe you're getting a lot of spam email coming through. You know on your contact form, if you're using Elementor forms or other systems, you will have an IP address. Not always, but it's good if you do. Stick the IP address into here, okay? So hopefully if you're getting a lot from a certain location, Eric Jones, anybody, you know, you want to kind of stop that happening. The firewall, well, we've already kind of enabled that, but we have not done the XML one because we got a bit of a warning there. So this is now where you get to rename the login. Most WordPress websites, it's URL backslash whatever you want to call it, WP hyphen admin. What if you want to get rid of that? So rather than WP hyphen admin, we're now going to have like a completely different code. I mean, don't go calling it admin or login, that's a bit kind of uh, basic, right? But maybe you want to give it a completely different name. So I might put a uh, websquadron.co.uk forward slash squadron. Good idea to put in like a number as well, you know, and maybe a uh, symbol. By the way, I'm not changing it to that. So don't even dare trying to access it if you do. But this allows you to have a different address. Just make sure you know that, especially if you've got other people logging in, because the next time they go in with WP admin, uh -uh, they're not getting through, which ain't good for anyone involved. Okay, so please make sure you do that. Spam protection, sorry, prevention, um, block spam bots. There could be someone who does get caught out by this. However, I don't think it's a bad idea to do this, especially if you are enabling comments, okay, on your blog posts. I actually don't like having comments on blog posts all the time unless you've got the time to moderate them. But if you are keen on that, you definitely might want to just go and tick that one as well. And obviously trash. I mean, I would honestly say, I'm probably going to say trash them after three days. I really don't care. There's nothing worse than when you go to comments, spam, there's like a hundred. I've never had that problem. 
I remember someone's website did have that problem. They were getting like 20 a day and they only logged in like every week or something to moderate and whatever. And it was like a whole long list. Just get rid of them. Knock them out. OK, um, we have scanner as well down here. Maybe someone has hacked into your website and changed the name of a folder because they're waiting for you to fill it in with um, orders from your WooCommerce store or something like that. It's not a bad idea to enable this. And I'm going to enable it to just be one week. So it might be that you want to ignore like JPEGs and WebPs or SVGs or anything like that. Um, it might also be that you want to ignore certain directories. So for instance, you might want to say uh, the plugins folder or something like that. You don't want that to be scanned. Then again, content uploads, things like that you would do. Now, if you're regularly updating your folder with lots of images, say you've got a directory website, you're going to get, every time there's a scan, you're going to be told, oh, new image, new image, new image. So have a think about that. But if you are only updating your website, say, every week, every month, maybe having this set up to give you a report daily, weekly, isn't a bad idea because maybe you only update every Friday. And then suddenly on Tuesday, it says something was added. You might want to go in and inspect and check that out. Maintenance. So if you remember right at the start on dashboard down here, we have uh, is the website in maintenance mode, um, which it isn't. But if it was, what is the message that you would want to be delivered? And obviously you can stylize it, uh, make it look a certain way. Personally, if I was going to put my website into maintenance mode, I would be putting in another page and I would be going down to my WordPress settings and I would say, right, well, that's the page everyone sees when they go in. However, if someone knows the URL for the shop, they could still do backslash shop and go to the shop page. All you've done is change where they landed. Whereas if you put your entire website into maintenance mode, then they're going to see this message or whatever message you put up regardless of what URL they go to. So don't just think, oh, well, I'll put coming soon. And that's where they land. Because if they then put forward slash shop or forward slash about or contact us or whatever, because they knew that from before, they'll still get to that page, which ain't a great idea if you're doing lots and lots of changes. OK, um, miscellaneous enable copy protection. A lot of people say, well, how do I stop images from being right clicked and all of that? Well, watermarking is a better idea. Because let's be honest, here, if you really want, you can lock me out from copy and pasting your text, but I could take a screenshot. I could save it as a PDF, right? I could go to a PDF to Word converter. So you could do this, but I'm going to say it's not like the be all or the end all. So back on the dashboard, I'm still at 115, surprisingly, um, but we have added in some security. Now, this plugin is completely free. Maybe there is a premium version. I can't see any features that are locked out for us at the moment. Um, and I've gone through some of the settings that I normally go through. Just watch out for the two factor authentication. OK, because I have seen it not working very well for me and for others as well. All in one WP security and firewall plugin is really, really good. There are quite a few settings. I will not deny that, but you go through what you want to go through. And it might be you just do some of the basics you know, especially with comments and IP addresses and login screens and all of that kind of thing. But I would definitely say do not overlook security plugins because you don't want to get caught out, especially if it's your website. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squad, and I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that stack, taking big swings, dish, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag.